name is Jenny, and I'm a wife and mom raising two kids. But I used to live a more glamorous life as a TV reporter. I was on the nightly news interviewing pop stars and politicians. So when I said goodbye to TV and hello to motherhood, I suddenly discovered what we moms are up against. We live in a world that tells us to be rich and famous, thin and successful. You know, almost nobody says, oh, hey, you're a mom? That's fabulous. But you are fabulous, and I'm here to tell you why. It's the Channel Mom Show, celebrating you with Jenny Dean Schmidt. Attention moms. You know, we're all so concerned about how we look on the outside, but what about our insides? Now you can age-proof your body with Protandum. Just reach for what's been called the best anti-aging product out there, as seen on the Today Show. Sign up now as a preferred customer, and after receiving your third bottle, get a $50 Visa gift card. Just click on the ad to the right of this video to get started. Welcome back to the Channel Mom Show, where we are celebrating you, Mom, on Mile High Sports Radio. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce an entire family, but really we just have Mom and Dad here speaking with us today. They are the kind of people that inspire you to completely change your life. They run an organization now called Passion to Action, but the way that they got there is nothing short of stunning. They are what I would say and what they would call living the new American dream. And my hope is that especially in this economy and at a time where people are rethinking their lives, they can inspire you this morning. So we are so pleased to welcome Jay and Beth Lakin. Am I pronouncing that correctly, Jay? That is correct. You, I saw you on TV and you've been on a couple of shows um, that, that people have perhaps seen uh, across the country. You were on, on Good Morning America several years ago. I, I happened to see you on life today with James and Betty Robinson and you have this amazing story uh, that you were sort of living what people would call the American dream and then everything changed um, would, would either you or Beth tell us about that yeah I mean we were we were living in Atlanta I was I was in the mortgage business and you know making more money than I'd ever dreamed I could make and uh, purchased a lot of things for ourselves and at the end of the day, we were just very empty, and we decided as a family that we would take a missions trip to Kenya, Africa, and we went over there, and of course, you know, what we saw was just stunning uh, to see the poverty and to get to meet the people and call them your friends, and they invite you into their home, and, and you know, it just was overwhelming to see the conditions that they were living in. But really what made the biggest impact on us was in the middle of all these dire circumstances, they had this incredible joy mm -hmm. and they had this community that we knew that we were lacking and we came back home and I remember like it was yesterday we just laid on the living room floor of our 4,500 square foot house and just began to weep and I think we realized at that moment that we were poor in comparison to the African people yeah. although we had so many material things we lacked the same joy and community that they had, and it really, really rocked our world. We began to just reevaluate everything that we were doing. What happened when you lay on that living room floor and, and had this epiphany and, and felt as though you were poor? Really, it was a family decision that all of us just looked at each other and thought, what are we doing with our lives? And, and so really, it was just the very beginning stages of trying to discover what were we put here for and what, mm -hmm. what did we want to do with our lives? years do we want to be doing the same thing just managing our life and running from one event to the next and filling up our life with stuff which actually stole our life you know right. it really steals your time and your energy and and your passion and, and and you really end up having very little time to devote to the things you really want to and so it was a huge evaluation process we took a lot of time to talk and to pray and to think and um, and you know at times as we as we were go, you know going through this process we thought are we crazy that we want to give up this life that we've worked so hard to attain right that we have spent endless hours and, and countless dollars and are we just ridiculous I mean is this just half insane you know and um, and but you know knowing what we knew at that point we couldn't divorce ourselves from from those strong emotions and those strong feelings telling us we were supposed to live differently Absolutely. and give more of ourselves away. And, and you know, Beth, and but by the way, welcome to the show. This is the first we've heard from you. <laughs> Tell me if I'm wrong about this. You did that thing that many of us do on any given day when we're racing around shopping, staring at our stainless steel refrigerator, staring at the bills, cleaning our, you know, whatever thousand square foot home. 
and and thinking to ourselves, is is this really all there is? Is this really all I'm here for? Just to maintain this stuff. And frankly, you know, J- Jay talked about the joy that people in other countries have. Sometimes I think it's because they're not beholden to their stuff, which doesn't love them back, frankly. So is, is it was it that kind of a place that most of us have been where you just say, what am I doing? What's this all for? Is this all there is? We realized that we were kind of pursuing this American dream, thinking that that was going to bring fulfillment. And, you know, I would, you know, make more money and then we'd buy stuff and think, okay, that's going to fill us up and that's going to bring us contentment. And it really did. And what we realized as we began to talk about our dream is that we had a dream to travel. We thought it would be one day after the kids were, were raised. Um, and then we, as we began to talk about, well, like, why aren't we pursuing that now? Um, and we didn't want to just travel for adventure reasons or homeschool reasons, but we wanted to really travel with a purpose. And so Beth looked at me and said, you know, what's your dream, Jay? And I think she knew what I was going to say. And I said, well, I want to sell the house, buy an RV, and travel the country and just serve people in need. And she said, well, that's my dream, too. And <laughs> So we began to just pursue that. So Beth, explain explain to people what that what it looks like. You're in an RV. People can also see that at your website. You're you're running around the country, but you're doing some really out of the box things. Um, we've been in the RV for actually going on four years. In April, it'll be four years. And so initially, when we set out, it was simple. Jay kept his mortgage job, and we, he did his work on the road. I continued to homeschool, and everywhere we went we would just serve, whether it was in rescue missions, homeless shelters, nursing homes, under bridges. We just kept our eyes wide open. And if we couldn't find anywhere to serve on the spot, we just would go on the streets and just, you know, uh, find people that were trying to collect money at gas stations and say, can I buy you a meal? And what they really need is relationships, somebody to ca- actually care about them and show them that they're, they're not throwaway, they're not invisible, they're, they're, they're really valuable people. Um, the more we did that, the more we just fell in love with this idea of showing the people who feel unlovable love and how powerful that was and how it influenced and changed our lives and how we realized how much we have to give away. Even if we don't have a lot of material things to give away, we have so much we can give to others just by loving them and walking beside them, getting to know their name. And, um, and so then as, as the journey went on, we realized along the way that people were wanting to be to be in service with us. People would say, well, show me what you do and how, where do you serve and where do you get involved? So it, it slowly began to turn into more than just our family, where we, were, we began to mobilize hundreds of people into service projects in their area. So um, as we began to bring people into service, it, it ignited something in them. And so our ministry just kept, you know, in this whole mission just kept rolling, kept going faster than us. And, um, and and before we knew it, we had a book deal. Um, yeah, you got a book. Tell, tell me about the book and, and what it's called and how they can get a hold of it. It's called Fashion to Action, and basically it's our story. It, we just kind of talk about the last, um, you know, the last three years of our journey, and, and we share, we're very open about sort of our backstory. Beth had a really difficult upbringing. We had a lot of issues in our marriage early on, and so we share those things very openly. And we're real passionate about people realizing that no matter who you are, you have something to offer, you have something to give, and we want to help empower people to put their passion into action. And that's the name of the book. It's Passion to Action. They can, people can learn more by going to our website at passiontoaction.org. That's the letters P-O uh, dot org. I want to quickly let people know that you are coming to Denver, that you plan to establish this whole thing there. And I want to thank you for being on the show. People can go to passiontoaction.org if they want to find out about how you're bringing this mission to Denver, okay? Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having us. All right, God bless you. Take care.